Yo everyone, today I'm going to show you how to become a boss with the Stealth Chopper so that you can farm ground people until they rage quit from the server in disgust. Let's begin by looking at my controls. I use the rifle aiming setup, which basically means that I have your left and your right controlled by my mouse and I have roll left and roll right controlled by the A and D keys. The rifle aiming setup allows me to aim very accurately as if I was just on foot aiming a rifle. It also helps keep the chopper stable at the same time. For the primary weapon, most people take the 30mm cannon pods because it is very, very effective at killing infantry and is fairly effective at killing armour and aircraft as well. You can also fire it for ages before it overheats. For the secondary weapon, most people don't take the air-to-ground missiles because the 30mm cannon pods are already effective against ground vehicles. After that, it's a split between taking the heat seekers or the wire guided tau missile. The heat seekers are good at forcing an enemy chopper to back off because if they use their flares against you then they don't have those flares to use against the 60 people on the ground pointing stingers at them. The wire guided missiles are good against vehicles although they can be hard to hit with. A good thing about them though is that once you fire them and are in the process of guiding the wire guided missile in, you can switch to your 30mm cannon and fire that at the target while you're doing this. Before we move on, I should also mention that although I don't use the heavy machine gun pods often, they are extremely effective against aircraft and lightly armoured vehicles. In fact, if you know that you're going to be constantly plagued by other stealth choppers, hinds, condors, etc. And you're not going to get much chance to farm people on the ground with 30mm cannons, then you should probably equip the heavy machine gun pods because they cut through aircraft way better than the 30mm cannons do. The drawback is that they do overheat quite quickly and they're nowhere near as good at killing infantry. Some of you might be wondering how the attack aircraft always gets taken so quickly at the start of the game. Well, how they do it is they make sure they had it selected from the previous game and then when it comes to the next game, they just spam whatever button brings up the vehicle selection screen and that will put them into the chopper quickly. So for me, I'm playing on PC and I haven't changed any of the controls, so I just have to spam spacebar at the start of the game and I'll get thrown into it. Once you get the stealth chopper, it's important not just to fly into enemy territory. You have to uh, assess the situation first. So here I'm looking to try and work out what the enemy team has up. So I want to know, do they have a stealth chopper up? Do they have a jet up? And where are their condors? Because I can't take everything on at once. So I'm going to try and find the stealth chopper and then eliminate that first. And then I'll be free to farm people on the ground. Okay, we can see the stealth chopper is coming right for us. So we have to kill that now or we won't be able to farm people down on the ground. Okay, so I'm just staggering my 30mm cannon at it. And it's dead. Now we're free to farm. Here we are on the American side. So I really don't want to have to fight two hinds and a stealth chopper at once. 
But luckily, I can see the hinds are moving away from the stealth chopper, so we can take it on. I do have heat seekers equipped here, so I may as well start the fight by locking on and firing one. He did the exact same. Now I'd like to close the distance quickly and kill him before he can fire off another missile, because I've already used my flares. And we've won. Now, here we are on the American side again, but I've just charged in without really thinking about where the enemy stealth chopper is. So I'm just going to kill this hind. But oh no, what a surprise. The enemy stealth chopper is taking advantage of the situation. So now I have to abandon killing that hind and flee. So they're both after me at the moment, so I just have to try and dodge them. I've been able to heal, and now I can turn the tables on them. Okay, he's retreating. But I have to retreat here because the hind's on me now. The heavy machine gun pods are very good for chopper duels, though you have to manage the heat level or you will overheat quite quickly, as I do here. As you can see, I'm tracking the enemy quite well here. That's because I'm using the rifle aiming setup which makes it easy to aim accurately. If you're attacked from behind and they dive down on you, then it's good to reverse so that you can get above them. If they're determined to come at you with heat seeker missiles and you've used your flares, then it's best to put cover between you and them to block any missiles. You can dodge missiles with the stealth chopper, but it's not very re reliable. Okay, now that we're close enough, I can open up on him with the 30mm cannon. It's good to try and take the height advantage where possible, as it's difficult for them to aim upwards at you without losing height. Here is another chump with heat seekers, so I'm going to put the cliff between us and him. Now, as I'm fighting him here, I need to be careful of people's stingers on the ground. So after I kill him, I'm going to need to go into stealth mode because I've already used my flare. Now, the Nightbirds have been nerfed hard, so I don't really regard them as much of a threat. If you are shooting at them, it's best to stagger your gun because they're quite a small target. It's best to just leave them alive, to be honest, most of the time. When fighting Hinds, it's best to take the height advantage. I would not recommend fighting them if they are above you, because they can just wreck you with the cannon. Where possible, try to get behind them and stay behind them. If you've got the 30mm cannon, if you aim at the cockpit, then there's a good chance you'll kill the gunner. Uh, or the pilot. Sometimes both. So I'm trying to stay above their big cannon so that they can't blast me with it. Now here a hind is coming at me from behind and it has the height advantage so I need to run. I'll now try to gain height so that I can fight on even terms. Every 
So I'm trying to make it difficult for anyone on the cannon. Now, when you have a gunner, remember that he can fire while you're in stealth mode. So I'm having a lot of issues with people locking on me here, so I need to go into stealth mode. But I can still chase the hind because I have a gunner who can shoot at it while I'm in stealth mode. So here I am, minding my own business. And a super hind comes bearing down on me. So as you can see, I'm just trying to stay behind it so its gunners can't target me. Yay, we won. When you're in stealth bomber mode, it's important to hold the bombing crosshair steady on your target so that as all the bombs come out, they land in the same place. Because most of the time you need the splash damage from each bomb to overlap. So as the bombs leave my chopper, I'm holding the crosshair steady on a specific point. We have secured an objective. can even guide them inside buildings. If you hit with all the bombs, you can kill any vehicle in one go except for the Mav. The bombs are good for sneaking up on wild cats and tanks if they're giving you bother as well. Sometimes you have to hold the crosshair on where they will be at the time the bombs hit the ground. It's okay if you don't hit with all of the bombs because you can just finish them off with uh, the 30mm cannon or the tow missiles, depending on what you have. Here's a wild cat which has been annoying me, so it needs to die. Sometimes when you're in the chopper it can feel like everyone has a stinger and they're all locking in on you. You need to learn when to run for cover and when to use your flares. You really need to save your flares for when you really need them. Now, one good strategy is to fight in an area where you can easily break any locks. Like here, I can just go from, I guess, safe area to safe area. So if, if in one area somebody locks on me, I just leave and go to the next place. Because remember, it takes a while for singers to lock on. So, as you can see, I'm getting locks quite a bit, but I just move away from them. So as long as I just move from place to place here, while using the cover, no one can lock on me. Or if they do lock on me, I can just use the cliff as cover. And if I get hacked, yeah, well, I can just go to the next place, 
before anyone locks in on me. Now I'm being hacked here, but instead of using my flares, I'm going to use this wall for cover. Again, oh, a lock. Oh, well, going for cover. Didn't have to use my flares there. Oh, two locks. I better get behind this building. Oh, and I've still got my flares, so I can use them for something else. Oh, I'm being hacked, so I need to get out of here. Sorry, missiles can't hit me. Again, using a building for cover. What's this? Another lock on. Well, I'll use the boat for cover. Now, sometimes you're out in the open and you've just got no choice to use your flares. Now, if somebody starts a hack on you and you can't get to cover, then it's best to use your flares immediately. If you are getting hacked and you don't use your flares fast enough, then you won't be able to use them. And that gives an opportunity for 70 guys with stingers to kill you. So here I'm fighting beside the building, which I can use for cover. We're being hacked, so I flare immediately, which delays the time anyone can lock on to me. Oh, lock on. Well, I've got no cover, so I had to flare there. You'll note I was able to see where the missiles came from, so I was able to kill them for forcing me to use a flare. Being hacked, so I had to flare there because I wouldn't have been able to get to cover in time. Well, I'm taking a lot of damage here, so in order to make sure I survive, I need to fly low so that no one can get an angle to lock on me. Now, if you make the enemy team really angry, they're going to come after you hard. If this happens, you need to be cunning. So here I've got a chopper pilot after me who is quite good, and there's a condor flying at me. Now I can't take on both of these at once, so I need to try and split them up. So condors can't really fly around buildings easily, so I can use that. Now I'm going to just try and evade this enemy chopper until I can heal. Okay, I have now healed, so now it's a bit more equal. He does have the height advantage on me. Alright, well, just need to go for it now. And we've done it, we've survived the gank. Okay, another chopper condor combo. I will say it is harder to survive a gank which involves super hinds. The best way of evading them is to fly in a tunnel if it's available. Okay, so now it's just as in that chopper. And we've done it. Yay! Now the tow missiles, the wire guided missiles, they can one shot uh, stealth choppers if you can hit them with it. 
They also do a lot of damage to Hinds and Condors, did about 50% health there I think. And once you fire the Tau Missile, you can swap to your cannon and fire that while it's coming in. The uh, tow missiles work well with bombs, so I've weakened it with the tow missile and now I'm just dropping the bombs on it. Jets can be a pain. The main danger is them ramming you. Remember that jets need to have a an angle on you. So if you can just not give them a clear angle to attack you on, you can ignore them a lot of the time. It's also good to be in stealth mode as they're doing their run if possible. If you you do need to fight them however though, it's best to go near the height ceiling so that you can shoot at them so that they don't have a height advantage on you. Get on! No dogs allowed. Does that work? Oh, hell. I'm playing the tail at the back. There we go. <laughs> Oh god. I'm getting turned into salami though. <laughs> Ranger connection. No, doggo! Uh, that's amazing. This is working, yeah. That's amazing. Oh! Ah, uh, roof. Not good. Good day, everyone. 